News. Today in court, the evidence battle. Uhuru's lawyers tear into Raila's case. A stray ballot is one yes. which is put in the wrong box. These are to be distinguished from a rejected ballot, from a spoiled ballot. What we are asking, yes. where do those five go? What exactly was a spoiled vote? Judges task IBC lawyers as hearing comes to a close. And the read-only access, IBC and NASA go back and forth of an audit of election servers. All right, good evening and welcome to the Supreme Petition. This is our nightly focus on this event that is happening at the Supreme Court, the event that the whole country is watching. This is a petition launched by NASA leader Raila Odinga. And tonight, things are coming to an end. Or oh, are they? Because all day there's been high drama. All the parties that were supposed to submit have submitted. But there is this one little matter that is still on the table. That read-only access that was granted to NASA by the courts. Oh, by the way, it was not just NASA. Every party to this, including the president's uh, team, was supposed to be part of this access. And there has been quite some uh, high drama around this. We understand that the court was supposed to resume its sittings at 8, at 7 p.m. actually. And right now it is uh, at 8 o'clock, one hour after that time set by the judges. And then I want to go straight to the Supreme Court where my colleague Sophia Wanuna is. She's been there all week. Uh, Sophia, the wait goes on one hour after the judges were supposed to have come back. What could be going on somewhere around the Supreme Court or perhaps uh, near some server? Good evening, Joe. Indeed, the wait uh, continues here at the Supreme Court. The judges uh, had indicated that perhaps they would be able uh, to get back by 7 p.m. tonight, but the CJ uh, saying that was dependent on if uh, the report uh, by the various parties that were overseeing the exercises, as had been directed by the court, had been able to complete uh, their reports. Remember, there were two exercises going on, uh, one at Anniversary Towers, the headquarters for the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, and this was in regard to the ICT aspect of this election, access to their logs and service as well on read-only, uh, if you like. Also, at Milimani Law Court, there was the scrutiny of the Forms uh, 34A as well as Forms uh, 34B. Uh, so we understand what may be causing that delay, because as late as around 6 p.m. is when officials were being able to wind up at least with what they had managed to get as a consent census uh, at anniversary towers and came and asked for more time now to be able to compile uh, their report. And I want to speak briefly to one of the NASA uh, representatives, that's Edwin Sifuna, who was at the anniversary towers to just talk to us about the experience they had. Of course, as we await uh, the report that will be delivered in court. Edwin, uh, please join me and thank you for making time for us. Uh, walk us through. This ruling was given yesterday, issued yesterday, uh, and of course, the guidelines as to what uh, kind of access and scope was as well directed by the judges. Today you are at Anniversary Towers. Talk to us uh, as well from yesterday to today what you witnessed. Uh, first, I must uh, take this uh, opportunity to, in the strongest words possible, condemn the action of uh, the IEBC in uh, continuing to put out false information through their social media accounts on exactly what was going on at their offices on 21st floor because uh, I have seen uh, repeated efforts by IBC to try and mislead the public as to what has happened and unfortunately various media houses have also picked up that as fact without actually checking with the rest of the people who are at IBC to confirm what the truth was. Mm -hmm. We were at uh, IBC at around, uh, uh, we had initially been scheduled to start the exercise at around 9 by 11 p.m. when we, uh, 11 a.m. when we went to the offices, uh, places that was designated for the exercise, 
there was nobody in the room and there was nothing going on, which is why you saw that uh, we sent word to our lawyers here at, uh, at the Supreme Court to bring it to the attention of the judges because we could see that uh, uh, time was running out and that, that nothing was going on there. And uh, Kenyans had the opportunity to hear the kind of excuses that uh, the IBC was putting out as to why that exercise was, was not had not commenced at, the, uh, at their offices. And uh, so uh, later on after that intervention by the court, we actually started at around uh, 2 p.m. And uh, we had extracted every single item from the order that was given by the court that we needed, and it was actually itemized. And most important of uh, those items was uh, access to be granted to the IBC database uh, to our experts so that they can be able to, you know, scrutinize it, what they call uh, read-only access, and to be able to also extract logs and copies because that is what the court order said. I can confirm to you that by the time we left uh, their offices at quarter to five, we have not been granted access to the IEBC database and all the falsehoods that they are putting out, I believe will come out very clear in the report of the experts. And uh, once again, Kenyans will get an opportunity to hear what I believe are extremely ridiculous excuses from an organization that has repeatedly given us assurances that uh, their systems actually work. All right. Many thanks, Edwin. We'll leave it there because we still await uh, to see the report. Thank you very much. The report uh, that will be submitted in court, Joe, remember uh, all exercises, the one at Anniversary Towers, the one at Milimani Law Court, were being overseen uh, by officials from the judiciary uh, being led by the registrar of the Supreme Court. Uh, so hearing there from one of the representatives uh, who was at that exercise and as far as the logs are concerned uh, saying at the end of the day they were not able to access that. And what we're hearing as well, uh, Joe, is that IEBC may want to ask for more time. But again, looking at the timelines we have by Friday, that judgment must be made. Uh, we We'll wait to see if the judges would be inclined to grant any more time, uh, even as we stand. Uh, but also what we're hearing, Joe, in regard to the scrutinizing of the forms uh, 34A at Milimani Law Court, uh, some reports indicating that they've been able to find quite a substantial number uh, of them as not having all the security features as had been highlighted by the IBC to be necessary and to be contained in all the forms which are legitimate. So we're hearing there are issues arising from that as well and also the forms uh, 34b in fact uh, one report indicating over 80 of them uh, through what the scanning they were using, uh, the barcodes as well as uh, UV light have found that over 80 have issues. Again, Joe, this is what we are hearing. Remember, the final report will be tabled in the Supreme Court behind me. We are waiting for that, but we understand why it's taken so long and where there's one that, that one hour delay so far is because this excess has been going late into the day. Remember, they even had to urge uh, more officials representatives from all sides, uh, the parties involved to be able to hasten uh, and speed up that exercise. So, Joe, we wait to see what the report will be and what the judges will decide thereafter. Joe. Yes, Sophia, as you mentioned, obviously there are a lot of things there that we will have to wait for that report to, to actually see what they are because there's a lot of information flying around. But a short while ago, I think uh, less than an hour ago, the IBC said that, uh, in fact, they were saying that the, the reason why there was uh, restricted access, actually quoting them, they said there were multiple security layers that restricted access to the servers. And this is uh, not at all dissimilar to what the lawyers had been saying earlier about uh, different things, the logistics and, 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 and all of that. What is the narrative that the, the IBC has right now, both from what the lawyers were saying in court and what we have been reading, either tweets and, and, and things like that? As we speak, what is the position that we can take as the position of the IABC as we speak? As we speak, we begin with that position but was given by the lead counsel in court earlier this morning, uh, Paul Mwite, uh, and it was one that has been criticized largely uh, because uh, the reason he gave the court as to why uh, action had not been taken on the orders of the court that were made yesterday was because uh, that today, as of the time of the court proceedings, uh, Europe was yet to, you know, be get on to business of the day, was still asleep, in fact, was the word used. Remember the CJ? 
yesterday uh, firmly responding to that and saying wake them up to get on with a process that's critical and even the CJ highlighting that these were orders that were given yesterday uh, but went on ahead to say let all parties do what they need to do and at the end they want to get a report of what happened and what did not. So that was the first uh, statement from the IBC and throughout the day uh, we've seen posts on the official handle IEBC uh, pretty much painting a picture of a process that's ongoing well, a process that is smooth, that they've been able to meet with all of their requirements and orders of that ruling. But as you're hearing uh, from one of the representatives, uh, Edwin Sifuna, who was at Anniversary Towers, it's a complete different story and who others who are present as well. Um, that there was an issue of accessing uh, these logs that in fact initially they'd been given soft copies but these soft copies were from five days ago and not what uh, the court had granted as read only in as far as the scope of what they would have had access to and then Joe there was a question of connectivity we're hearing from parties present that allegedly it was allegedly it was cited by IBC as being a hindrance and why it was taking so long that they were unable to connect with their service in in Europe so really uh, the light and the you know the truth about all this will come out uh, we guess in a few moments or when it is uh, court resumes here at the Supreme Court based on that report because what we understand there was a checklist so whether it's anniversary towers at Milimani law court uh, that the individuals from the Supreme Court, the officials, uh, were being able to tick that these are the schematics, these are the areas we're looking into, has this been met, were there issues here and there, and this was being done in the presence of all uh, parties involved in this petition. And at the end, before the report was put together, each party was being given an opportunity to summarize their findings throughout the day. So we'll wait to see what the final report is. Uh, of course, a lot of speculation, as you said there, especially on social media, on some of those developments we are witnessing, Joe. You confirmed to us, Sophia, assuming that this report uh, is there somewhere, uh, because I'll be asking you whether it is being prepared, but assuming that the report comes to court right now, run us through what is supposed to happen to it. Um, that will be, we understand it is being prepared. That we have gotten as and it, the report is being prepared and it is more time that the officials from the Supreme Court that were overseeing the exercise asked for to prepare because these exercises are in late into the day. When we go to court, uh, it is uh, what we understand as soon as the report is ready, it will be shared with the eight judges, uh, of, sorry, seven, six judges actually that are sitting today because one judge is not present due to illness and all the parties. Also to be room and, and leeway given for them to go through it so it will not be an ambush of a report being read court before all the parties have seen so there will be some time we don't know how much time but the parties will get to read it and just be able to uh, familiarize themselves with the findings of this report prepared by the officials from the Supreme Court and then once we get into the courtroom this uh, CJ the Chief Justice and the President of the Supreme Court did give direction before uh, they adjourned that only three individuals will be able to speak representing the party and you'll have one individual representing the two Two petitioners uh, speaking, uh, uh, 10 minutes it is, they will be given to respond to this uh, report. And there will be another individual representing the first and the second respondent, that's IBC, as well as the IBC chair and the third individual that will be given uh, audience by the judges in the Supreme Court is uh, a representative of the, of the third respondent, that's President Uhuru Kenyatta. And thereafter, we expect the judges uh, will give guidance and direction, Joe. So if the NASA people are saying that they haven't got access up until very late in the evening, actually the IBC appeared to confirm that there had been a problem with access, that as a matter of fact, that access was either granted or restored at about 6 o'clock. Are you saying that between 6 o'clock and around now, that's when they went back and, and checked whatever they were checking? Do we know if they went back at all? And, and what is the status of that whole report based on the fact that the IABC access was restored just a short while ago, could that be why they, someone would be asking for more time? 
Um, no, because Joe, yes, I'd be syndicating they've been able to get access at 6 p.m., but this was after the meeting had been adjourned or the session uh, at the anniversary towers for the ICT uh, aspect of access and scrutiny is concerned because then you had uh, the likes of Edwin Sifuna who was part of that coming here, and what he indicated to us is that then they were called back, but this was after uh, all of the parties involved had given uh, their submissions to the judiciary, the Supreme court official overseeing uh, this activity and as far as what they need to note. Uh, so the extra time uh, we're talking about as far as what likely the IABC will be asking for uh, during the uh, time to address the court this evening will be to make that argument that we were able to gain connectivity with our service as they, at this particular time. It was after the time that was stipulated by which we should present a report and so we are asking for more time to then uh, continue uh, with the exercise. Uh, but in as far as whether that will be granted or not or if in fact they will ask for more time, Joe, it's a wait and see. All right, great. Sophia, you hang in there. We'll check in with you a few moments from now, uh, just in case some developments come out. Sophia Wanuna reporting live from the Supreme Court, where she has been most of the days, actually, since this case started, and uh, I will be checking on that. Now, I want to speak to, 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 to my guest here, Harun Ruby. How are you today? Very well, thank you. Yeah, were well, you at the Supreme Court, or you've been monitoring from... I've been monitoring from a distance. From a server, from a server or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but thank you very much for, for joining us, and uh, an interesting development development uh, here about servers and about access and, and, and everything. What does the court do under these circumstances, given the fact that there was an order given yesterday, but for some reason, good or bad, legitimate or not, we don't know, but we find ourselves here where the court was supposed to resume proceedings at 7 p.m. and for some reason, one hour, 15 minutes later, we are still not back. And it seems to be based on the fact that there were some delays with this access issue and therefore the report. Yes, uh, the explanation given by uh, IBC counsel, uh, senior counsel Muite, on uh, the delay with this ob obedience on to, the, to the court order uh, it's not satisfactory in my view to suggest that the servers are somewhere in Europe. Well, I mean, the judges didn't have a problem with it. They, they didn't contest Well, probably they didn't, yes, but yeah. or they didn't want to issue, uh, to, to cause any controversy at that point. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I guess that the servers, wherever they are, whether in Europe or on the moon, they ought to be available 24 hours, 24-7, so that uh, access ought to be dependent on our need, not on the working hours of the European or other country and, where they're and, based. And I'm sure some Someone might be making that argument, but, but just explain to us, in an instance where the court has given all these orders, and then for whatever reason, because we don't know right now what reason will be presented in court, Yes. Uh, what, what, what happens? Because the court was supposed to resume at 7. I would take they it back to 2013, yeah. when a similar exercise, though that was more manual in terms of uh, scrutinizing of the form, uh, uh, there were 16 A's or B's, that was which is equivalent, on its own yes, motion, on its yeah. own motion, yeah. and uh, directed the registrar of the court, then be the one uh, uh, leading the exercise. It was frustrated, partly by interested parties and I think partly by the then registrar of the court. And uh, you will recall that the outcome from that scrutiny was never delivered. It was never even referred to by that court uh, in its judgment. I think this is one of the things that can easily happen if an, a person who is interested in an outcome uh, frustrates the process. However, uh, this bench, this time around, has been somewhat more firm. Uh, I don't want to give the McLean Bill of Health yet, but they, they seem firmer than the previous uh, bench. Uh, they're asking more in-depth questions than the previous bench of 2013. And I am hoping that, um, especially with the server ICT uh, uh, scrutiny, that's something that uh, councils and uh, a lot of people are saying can be done within a few hours. So even if it's not available now, so long as the, the server has been opened, it is possible that the scrutiny can be done overnight and a result be given to the court tomorrow. Uh, remembering that it is being done simultaneously with the one checking of the, on uh, Form 34 yeah, A's yeah, and B's yeah, yeah. where I, am, uh, I, I don't think I'm at liberty to say what, I, what they are saying, but uh, you heard what your colleague said, that there are many, many errors that are being found to be on 
on those forms. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and I'm sure some, someone will bring it up uh, in, in the court. But, but uh, moving on, there was, uh, you mentioned the judges are asking questions and, and, and so on. Is this what is expected of, 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 of judges? Because uh, there was an interesting moment, and I'll just play uh, something for you. There was a moment when uh, uh, the judges were asking questions about ballots that are not marked and, 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 and so on. Uh, let's just watch that, and then we can come back and talk about it. It is indeed correct that the format of voting is that you're given all six votes and you walk into your booth and you take them. Now, the regulations, however, make provision for an item known as a stray ballot. There are many ballots that end up in the wrong ballot box. The regulations call them stray ballots. These are to be distinguished from a rejected ballot from a spoiled ballot. The same regulations require that the presidential election be counted fast. And so that by the time the results are being streamed onto uh, our screens and being counted, all the other street ballots have not yet been counted because they're in the other boxes. You walk into a polling booth. Yes. You're given six ballot papers. Yes. So you decide, as you may decide. Yes that you'll only vote for uh, a presidential candidate. Right. That leaves you with five. Yes. Those five yes. are not stray. No. They are unused. Yes. You've been given six, yes. but you have elected to use only one. Yes. That leaves you with five. Yes. What we are asking, Yes. where do those five go? How are they accounted for? It's a simple question. Oh, yes. And They're I not stray. Well, that was a very interesting moment where we saw the, the, the judges um, really put the lawyers on the, on the, on the spot. That's, that's, that's very unusual, uh, I think. It's not it's, unusual, actually. That's how it should be. Well, at least for the Supreme Court. I mean, we saw 2013. <laughs> I don't remember too many questions like that. Well, that's why I said that in the mm -hmm. previous bench, in 2013, there weren't people, the judges seemed like they just wanted to hear the, uh, the, judge, the, the lawyers make submissions. I think they were a little bit bullied by some of the lawyers at the time, uh, but this time around this Supreme Court has put its foot down, it has declared that it is in charge, and therefore it is important for the court to clarify in its mind what, are the, what is the position a particular party is taking regarding a particular issue. Mm -hmm. And it's important to remember, especially asking questions around this ballot, I would like Kenyans to note that the IEBC is not your usual party in a case in court. The IEBC occupies the position one would equate with that of a court, an independent organ that is supposed to make decisions exercising discretion regarding the matters related to elections. So that and remembering that they are the only ones who have custody of all the material related to elections. So they cannot come to court and say we are offering no explanation, yet they are the custodians of all the material, they are the custodians of all the information, they are the generators of all that information. And between the three parties, if, uh, for instance in the petitioners and the other respondents other than the IBC, or the three between the petitioners, the IBC, and the third respondent, uh, the president, it is IBC that has the strongest position in terms of what it, what it owns, what it, it knows. The other important point to the But before we move to that next point, Harun, right. yes. uh, to be fair to the IBC, when they are sued, surely they have to defend themselves. I mean, unless you're saying there's something wrong with the law mm -hmm. that we shouldn't be suing the IBC, maybe we need to sue the person who has declared the winner. Because at the end of the day, if the IBC becomes a defendant, a respondent in, in this case, surely they would want to protect themselves and defend themselves and say what we did was the right no. thing. IABC is a necessary party because it is the one that managed an election. Like Feroz uh, uh, quite eloquently submitted as I listened to him, he said, IABC is the one that conducted this election. The third respondent was only a beneficiary of its processes. Mm -hmm. So that 
when you see a state organ such as IABC, an independent uh, in constitutional organ, uh, being sued on account of the post, because it holds the responsibility to manage our elections, it is not being put in the defense like an ordinary guy like you. If someone sued you today, uh, they can say Joe Ageo has no responsibility to provide information that might aid the case of the person suing. Mm -hmm. But when it's a, a state institution, and this is a defense I think that um, uh, the DPP tried in the Chomley case, where they tried to say that we, there is equality of, of arms. So if the accused person is entitled to statements in advance, then when uh, that accused person is put on his defense, the state was claiming that it has an equal right to statements from the other side. And the court said, no, you are not equal in this regard. You are the prosecutor. So wait until you hear what the defense they have to raise. So IEBC cannot claim an equal right of defense to obfuscate the truth, obfuscate information, and uh, generally conceal information as if it is defending itself. It is a public body that enjoys public trust. Some, some, and but some, some people have said perhaps we need to uh, reorganize or amend our laws or whatever so that they probably are mere witnesses. Because the moment they are sued, I mean the chair, for example, is sued and I would imagine, I'm not a lawyer, but you are here to tell me, I would imagine that if, for example, supposing the IBC was found to have done something illegal and the chair or whatever, that there would be some sanctions. So one would imagine that the rules of natural justice would suggest that they need to get everything they can get Not to, regarding prove, to, petitions. Prove, to prove that they did something. <laughs> Not regarding <laughs> petitions. When uh, rules of natural justice would uh, be invoked, would set in immediately up an individual, let's say the chairperson of IBC, being the returning officer for the presidential election, is found to have committed a, a, an election offense in a criminal manner, and the DPP decides to prosecute him, then he, as an accused person, will enjoy mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. right to a fair trial. But IBC, as a public institution that is holding the position in, on account of public trust, it has every responsibility, just like our courts. You don't expect the courts to be defensive uh, and say we can't reveal so much. That's why I am happy that uh, this time around we can discuss an ongoing judicial process in, uh, on account of openness and public participation and scrutiny. So the IABC ought to be prepared at all times to be to be exposed and open to scrutiny and answer questions. There is no need for electro for reforms to insulate IABC from being questioned. In fact, if you made IABC the, the witness and they colluded with one party, then that case would be as good as dead. Uh, remember that uh, both in 2013 and this time around, the in 2013, the IEBC lawyers and the, the respondents' lawyers, that is uh, Uru Kenyatta's lawyers, you wouldn't tell the difference in terms of the submissions they were making. But, but, this time, uh -huh. they are nearly similar except for the very rare occasion that uh, IEBC that lawyers IABC. considered to providing information openly to. And then the president's lawyers were caught unaware. So, exactly. but, but, but if you think about it, uh, there have been many petitions in this country, even under the new constitution, this thing that you are saying that the IBC should, IBC should somehow be treated differently in petitions, have you seen it anywhere in all the petitions? Uh, is there a judge or a court that have said, uh, that said, well, you know, you are the IBC, you are not any ordinary party to a petition? Is, is there, is, does that kind of ruling exist in our law as, as we speak? Looking at our constitution, uh, perhaps uh, we haven't had uh, uh, too many or, uh, or that question hasn't arisen as to how do we treat IABC when it's a party. Uh, it is sued and yet it is the custodian of the information that, that is supposed to help both the petitioner and the other defendant in prosecuting their positions. The point I take is that I, the Constitution has granted certain powers to IEBC and ensured that it, it is so powerful and so insulated already uh, on account of the responsibility it has to establish uh, our governance structures in terms of elections that it cannot be treated like you and me in an ordinary case so that uh, 
why the, our judges have not gone further is to recommend uh, criminal sanction against individual uh, officers. I think that there might be one or two where the courts have said investigated these people in terms of what they con how they conducted themselves. In fact, in 2013, yeah, there was a suggestion mm -hmm. that the DPP should have investigated certain, uh, you know, of staff of oh, IBC. Okay, we will continue with this uh, discussion in a short while, but um, just bringing up to speed, if you're just joining us, that the wait is still on at the Supreme Court. The judges were supposed to have come back at 7 p.m. We understand that uh, there's been some delays with regards to the report of that scrutiny that was supposed to happen first of the IBC servers but also with the forms uh, that the, uh, the petitioner, that is uh, NASA, had asked for. So we're waiting for that to see when the judges will come and what that report has to say. But in the meantime, we'll take a short break here. We'll be right back with more perspectives.